Hey, bada 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 bada, so we bada. Welcome to our daily devotional for Thursday, May 14th, 2020. We are back with the fifth installment of Lessons from Baseball Cards. This is an opportunity for me to use an illustration from a baseball card in order to plant a few devotional thoughts with you today. Something happened last week, and that's that I took a, a week off. I took a little break uh, from doing these lessons. I, after four weeks of it, I kind of started to feel like I was saying the same thing every week, and I wondered if anybody really wanted to hear it again. And so I took a week off, and what happened was I began getting suggestions and text messages of folks saying, hey, why don't you do a devotional over this baseball card or over this baseball player? So we'll be getting to those in the next few weeks. But today I want to do one of a player that possibly you've not heard of, maybe you have, uh, but one that I'm really excited about. And that's the 1977 Topps Johnny LeMaster. This is not his rookie card. His rookie card was actually in 76, but that was back when they would put multiple players on the same card. And so I didn't, I didn't really care much for that. So we're going with the first card with just him on it, the 1977 Tops. And I'm really excited about this one because Johnny's someone that, that in the past I've been able to, to know a little bit, uh, but he's also somebody that I hold a lot of admiration and respect for. And I must be honest with you, uh, my admiration for him has little to do with his baseball career. My respect for him is out of his love for the Lord's Church. He serves as a shepherd in the church in Paintsville, Kentucky, but especially out of his love for truth and his love for mission work. And it was actually on mission trips in Peru where I was able to get to know him first. Okay, so a little bit about the career of Johnny LeMaster. Johnny had a 12-year career in Major League Baseball, 10 of those with the San Francisco Giants, who actually drafted him in the first round out of high school in the 1973 Major League Baseball draft. And that would have been a very difficult decade to play for the Giants, of course, because they were competing in a very difficult NL West with so many uh, good Los Angeles Dodgers teams. Uh, but Johnny comes up through their system and, and gets into the major leagues, and he's a shortstop, which is, of course, one of, if not the most important position uh, defensively in baseball. And that, of course, is because shortstop has so many different responsibilities. That's where you got so many right-handed hitters pulling the ball to that side. So you want, traditionally, you want your most athletic player to play shortstop. You, uh, traditionally, you would look for your best fielder to play that position. You wouldn't necessarily be thinking about power hitters playing that position. Though, of course, nowadays, it seems like everybody hits for power. But traditionally, that would have been where you wanted to put your best glove. And so Johnny LeMaster comes up through the farm system and makes it to the major leagues and has a 10-year a stint with the San Francisco Giants. Let me tell you about a couple of highlights from Johnny's career. The first one actually took place in his very first at bat in Major League Baseball. Uh, Johnny set a Major League Baseball record by hitting an inside-the-park home run in his very first at bat in Major League Baseball. It's a very interesting story in that he comes to the plate, the great Don Sutton, pitcher for the Los Angeles Dodgers, a current Hall of Famer. He's on the mound pitching. He throws a fastball. Uh, they're, they're playing at Candlestick Park, not the greatest ballpark to play in. You might remember it from uh, the earthquake in Game 3 of the 1989 World Series, uh, but not the greatest ballpark. They had artificial turf at that time, but Johnny hits that fastball, line drive straight up the middle. It, take, it just lands just perfectly on a seam of the turf of the carpet and takes an awkward bounce over the center fielder's head, which gives Johnny the chance to come all the way around, crossing home plate, standing up, and setting that Major League Baseball record with that inside the park home run. One article that I read, it was interesting that he said as he crossed home plate there in his very first at bat, he thought, man, this is easy. What an incredible story. What an incredible begin to a career. Uh, certainly, that must have been an amazing feeling for him uh, to begin his career on that note. The next highlight that Johnny is most known for is what we'll call the Boo Incident. Uh, Johnny's probably most remembered for his sense of humor in the Boo Incident. Those Giants teams, again, they had struggled uh, quite a bit, and he had somehow become the target for the fans to 
to unleash some of their frustration with the teams. And so they had begun booing him relentlessly every time he would come to the plate. And I actually remember hearing him tell this story and you could still see how much it hurt him to remember the feeling of coming to the plate and having 20,000 of your own fans booing you. Well, as the story goes, one night his wife suggests to him, hey, if they're gonna boo you, maybe you ought to change your name to Boo. And that gives him the idea. A few days later, he goes to the equipment manager and asks him if he can make up a new jersey. And rather than putting LeMaster on the back of the jersey, he replaces it with Boo. And so he carries that jersey with him for a few weeks, trying to build up the courage to wear it in a game. And finally, it happens. It's July 1979. He steps into the batter's box wearing a jersey that says Boo on the back of it. And what happens is slowly the fans boos as they re recognize what he's doing, turn into cheers for him. Uh, so it's just an amazing story of him winning people over. Unfortunately, he only got to wear the jersey for a half of an inning. Uh, his manager in the dugout, not seeing so well, he didn't notice it so as to put a stop to it, but the general manager of the team absolutely noticed it. And so he met him when he comes back to the dugout uh, with a command to put on the correct jersey and, of course, a $500 fine waiting for him in the locker room after the game. Uh, but what a great story of taking a difficult situation, rather than lashing out at folks that are mistreating you, but taking that difficult situation and using your sense of humor in order to win over the folks who seem to be against you. Now to our lesson starters from the 1977 Tops, Johnny LeMaster. The first lesson starter that I want to leave with you this morning is to make the best out of a difficult situation. Make the best out of a difficult situation. In 2 Corinthians 4, verses 9 and 10, Paul said, We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. In this text, Paul is writing to a church in Corinth that's struggling with faith in the midst of the pagan culture that they live in. And he's encouraging them to persevere and to make the best out of a difficult situation. Now for us, when we are faced with a difficult situation, we have the tendency to get wrapped up in ourselves. We have the tendency to look at a larger situation only through the eyes of the current difficulty or of the smaller difficulty that's a part of that larger situation. Now, for example, if you're a student in school, uh, you may be a good student, but you might have difficulty with one particular subject. And as a result, you just say, well, the whole educational experience has been a failure. Or in your career, you may be good at your job, but you have difficulty with one specific project but you amplify that difficulty by just saying, well, the whole career has been a failure. You have an argument with your spouse and you amplify that to, well, the whole marriage is a failure or difficulty with one phase that a child might be going through. And you amplify that into, well, I'm just a complete failure as a parent. But rather than amplifying the difficulty in a situation, we need to be people that learn to look for the good in a situation. We need to be people who can focus on the good aspects of the situation we're in. We need to be people who learn to lean on God and to talk to him in prayer and ask him to help us in those situations, because that's going to be what we need to sort of give us that push to work to improve the difficulties rather than giving up altogether. So let's make the best out of difficult situations. The final lesson starter that I want to leave with you this morning is to leave a legacy of faith. Leave a legacy of faith. Notice what it says in Matthew 6, 19 and 20. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. You know, thinking about Johnny LeMaster as a baseball player, a 12-year career in the major leagues is really something that one could hang their hat on. 
That's an incredible accomplishment. But listening to him talk, as I mentioned, I've had the opportunity to hear him and to know him a little bit. It's easy to spot that he's not hanging his hat on that baseball career. It's easy to notice that his passion is somewhere else. Certainly there's a love for the game of baseball, but his passion to me seems to be with faith and family. Uh, you listen to him talk, you look at his work, and that's easy to spot. I know there's a strong church in Ica, Peru today, and that's largely because of his leadership and his passion for the faith. And so I believe that's the legacy that he's leaving with his family. And I think that's a good lesson for us to take this morning to make sure that we're placing our passions in the right place, to make sure we're laying up for ourselves treasures in heaven rather than on earth. And let's make sure that we leave that legacy of faith with all of those who are around us as well. So there you have it. Those are our lesson starters this morning from the 1977 Tops Johnny LeMaster. Thank you for being with me for this study.